and sisters, I, I just like to teach a few things from the Bible. Praise God. You know, there's some out there who say that the Christian Bible's changed. It hasn't changed. Christianity's changed. I mean, it's not Christianity anymore. And many of the Bibles they use are no longer the Bible. It's not the original Word of God. You see, sisters, even as the prophet Muhammad, you know, peace be upon him, even as he used the Torah, the first five books of the King James Bible, to make his Quran, see, that's what Christianity stems from. It's never changed. Even in our King James Bible, it says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We also find out that, you know, Solomon, the son of David, he said, you know, if there's no man that sinneth not, and we find it again in the New Testament where it says, you know, all of sin falls short of the glory of God. It's written, my word changes not. And when we see that, we can see that Jesus Christ, he doesn't change, he's the word of God. When we look into it, the problem that people have with Christianity is not, oh, how can I work this? The biggest problem they have is because the Word of God is spiritually discerned. See, the Quran is read like a book. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wrote the Quran, he wrote it to be read as a book and interpreted as a book. Now, the problem with Christianity is that many people can't see the spiritual types and shadows. The Word of God being spiritually discerned. And when we look into this, all them Bibles, you see, sisters, all them Bibles, that's interpreted. The King James Bible is translated from the Greek, the Hebrew, and the Aramaic that Jesus spoke. And when we go into that, we find that the the King James Bible has no uh, flaws in it. What we find in the New Testament is what we find in the Old Testament. But it's mysteries, types, and shadows which are revealed in that New Testament. When we look at that, sisters, oh, praise God, we can see so many things. You see, the prophet Muhammad you know, peace be upon him. I don't want to offend any of my Islamic sisters. When he used that first five books of the Bible, the Torah, he said that, you know, a believer of those who believe the words that were given to Moses. And that's true because that's what Christianity is based from. But you see, when you get down to it, the first five books of that Bible and what the Lord told Moses. He said, go and tell them that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent thee. And when you get down to it, there are many things wrong. See, they, you, you try to find contradictions with the King James Bible and Christianity. You can find many, many flaws in all the interpretations where men have perverted the word of God. They've changed it to suit their glory. We can see all these things, but when we really get down to it and they pervert it, you know, look at what Islam has done, and I'm not trying to slam them or belittle them. You see the same thing. In the Christian faith, it's been divided up into various denominations, such as Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, Pentecostal, etc., etc. In Islam, we see that there's Sunni, and you have Shia, or Shia, I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but you have the same thing. It's divisions. 
is where people start interpreting things and they interpret them wrong. When you get down to it, you know, the Lord said that his angel would guide Moses. You know, that angel being what? The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. When we see that Spirit of God which led Moses, we can see that once again, the Word of God is spiritually discerned. See, it's types and shadows. Remember how Jesus spoke in parables? He gave all of them parables about the seed, the sown on four types of soil. He gave parable after parable of the wedding that a king made for his son. When we start looking at all these parables in similitudes, types and shadows, we can see that everything bears witness to Jesus. The words the Lord gave Moses, I'm telling that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent thee. Well, we know that the Arabs, they come from the seed of Ishmael, from what we're told. Not Isaac. There were two sons. One was Isaac and one was Ishmael. One was a child of the flesh and the other was a child of the spirit, the promised child. You know, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You know, and the government should be upon his shoulder, the cross. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Christ Peace. When we see these things, it's all spiritually discerned, sisters. Oh. When we see these things, We see the Word of God is spiritually discerned. We see the types and shadows. We see there's no flaws. So when we get back to it, you know, the Lord told Moses to go and set his people free from Egypt, the children of Israel. That was the Jews, the Hebrews. So when we look at that, when we look at the Arab people coming from Ishmael, the child of the flesh, and we see that the Jewish people, the Hebrews, they come from the child of promise, Isaac. Well, when you look at it like that, it's all you know, similitudes, types and shadows of two different people. And when we look at how the Word of God can be twisted, Let's look at one thing with Islam. Right now I'm wearing a niqab. I see no harm in it. It doesn't bother me to look through a veil. It doesn't bother me one bit to have my face covered. All Christians should be humble. I don't believe the Christian sisters should have to veil their face, such as I'm doing. You see, the Lord told us to do our own in secret, and that's the reason for the Nikah. It's to teach sisters as a sister in secret. Nobody needs to know who I am. If our Lord Jesus could come into this life and veil himself in flesh so he could stand right before men, and they could not even behold his glory, and see he was the express image of his father, then who am I to demand to be seen? Really, who are any of us to demand that we need to be seen? If I was, my spirit was putting a female body, why would I have to demand to show my glory? You know, a female, a woman's hair is her glory, as it's written. Why would I have to demand that? What's so hard about wearing a dress and wearing gloves and wearing veils? And that's no problem. It doesn't bother me. It's just typical, typical humility, a God-given humility, once again by the Spirit of God. So when we go into Islam, my understanding, I may be wrong, is that merely a woman is to cover her hair and cover her breasts. 
not to entice a man. But yet we see in some various aspects of Islam, some areas the niqab is mandatory, the hijab is mandatory. Like in Iran, they have the chador. I'm not sure if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but you have the chador. See, it's just like the same with Christianity. In Christianity, they've perverted it, given women equal rights in the church, which they should have never done. The Spirit of God can speak through a woman, a sister, to use her as a prophetess. Remember Miriam from the Torah, the first five books? When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, and Pharaoh and his army died, then we see that Miriam and the women danced with timbrels. See, once again, here's where Islam contradicts itself with the first five books of the Bible. Because Miriam was a prophetess, and the women danced with timbrels and rejoiced over Pharaoh and his army being killed. So when we see this, yet Islam does not believe in having music. That goes against the first five books of the Bible. Christianity, now we do believe in worshiping and praising our Lord. And we believe in singing unto him and playing with a loud instrument. It's even written in Psalms that David had an instrument of ten strings. In the Old Testament, it's written that he made instruments of music. So you see, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. People have contradicted. They've contradicted Islam from what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, originally ordained with the Quran. They've twisted it in some areas. They actually, and this is the sad part, evil men will twist the words of the Quran to entice women just so that they can have more than one wife. And then, yes, so many stories come out where women are trying to escape from Saudi Arabia, Arabia because Sharia law is so oppressive unto them. And we see it all the stories. There were people who joined ISIS, and now they're trying to come back home. These girls were deceived, and they became sex slaves for ISIS. That ought not to be. And you know, the thing of it is, that's where they've twisted, little groups have twisted the Quran to match what they want it to mean. And they've twisted it to get people, typically girls, they twisted it to get them to join Islam. Then once they do, then many times, they end up abused, you know, as it's written, you know. Uh, I don't remember what Thorah it is, but it says that, you know, the last step, you can beat your wives if she's rebellious. Well, you know, that's just in there that they can beat your wives, and, you know, that's a license to open the door for abuse. <clears throat> now when you get down to this now, in Christianity, many have done the same thing. Sisters, for the last 40 to 60 years you've been lied to. You've been told you can live any way you want. been by evil people. They're doing the same thing as those who pervert Islam. The problem is, is that it leads to an eternal death and an eternal damnation. 
when they turn their back on Jesus, you know, I was hoping for that they would turn back to Jesus when they turn and walk away. Because they've been lied to. See, it's clearly written in the New Testament that women should marry, bear children, and guide the household. And to be discreet, chase keepers at home. And the older women should teach her younger. All of those televangelists that rose up in mega churches, they all twisted it and perverted it to give women equal rights in a church and allow them to be bishops and deacons, preachers, which is an abomination. It's clearly written that a bishop and deacon must be the husband of one wife. That rules out women. Now when we look at these things, sisters, we can find them in the first five books, in the Torah. Sarah was in the tent. See, she wasn't out running around. But Sarah was in the tent. Discreet chase, keepers at home. She feared Abraham in the New Testament. She says, says that she feared him and even called him Lord, Master. Yes, Jesus is the husband, the Lord, the master of his church, the last Adam. These are all spirit similitudes, types and shadows. It's spiritually discerned. That's how we read the King James Bible. Spiritual discernment as the Holy Ghost would show it. It says that they should bear, marry, bear children, and guide the house. But remember Samuel's mother? Samuel's mother, she was so grieved because she couldn't have a baby. And she prayed. and She was so heartbroken that she prayed in her heart and only her lips moved. But yet the Lord heard her. And when we start looking at this, yes, they should marry, bear children, and guide the house. Rebecca, look at what happened to her. Oh, Rebecca, when that servant came to her once again. See, that's a type in shadow. It's a similitude of the Lord using his spirit to draw us to Jesus, that he can be our betrothed, our husband. And when we see that, Rebecca, that servant came for her, and oh, he put the bracelets on her hand. You know, and hand jewels. Like that. And he attached the earring to her face. You know, the nose ring that so many use for a fan. And it really looks foolish on a lot of women. It's actually the wedding ring. That wedding ring, that nose ring, that's precious. When it's used for the wrong purpose, it looks foolish. When the Word of God is used wrong, it's foolish. When people live wrong, they look foolish. See, if I was to show my face, and you'd see what I really look like, in a dress, a veil, and gloves, it, people would laugh and they would, some would be disgusted and they would say, how dare you do that? Well, it's because they don't know anything about making yourself an enoch for God. They don't realize that an enoch can be both ways. He can be very feminine or very masculine, depending on how he's being used. But if I was to show my face and people saw that, then they would laugh and they'd say, boy, that looks foolish. Or boy, that's an abomination. Well, you see, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it, said, it says, you be witnesses unto me. Well, you know, you stop and you think about it. I know. <laughs> We're witnesses unto God. Look in the Torah. Uh, he should be witnesses unto me. You notice how the Lord saw everything that happened. The Lord saw them sin while Moses was up in the mountain. 
getting the Ten Commandments. He saw it and he sent Moses back down. He was angered. He was going to destroy him. Because we should have the gods before our Lord. When we see these things, we can see that yes, we're witnesses unto him. That's why, sisters, when you're wearing them pants and showing off your legs, and you're trying to look like your husband or your boyfriend, your brother, look at how foolish you look to our Lord. He created you to be female. When you demand that you have to have your hair showing, or your face, even your face showing, or even your hands, to be seen, that's make a, good, a God before our Lord. Thou shalt have no gods before me. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See, to love your neighbor as yourself, you're teaching the truth. There's no contradictions in the Word of God. When one uses the King James Bible, the Word of God will never change. It will stand fast. It will not change. And God, see, you know, the Mormons used to say, well, you know, there's a testament of Jesus Christ from the Mormon church. He had to send another prophet with another gospel. Do you realize that that's the same thing as what some in Islam are saying? that it got perverted so bad that God had to send another prophet with the truth. But yet, you know, the truth in Islam, according to the Quran, does not match up with the first five books of the Bible the way the King James does. In the King James, there's no contradiction because the Word of God never changes. Now, all them interpretations, the Living Bible, New American Standard, and all these easy to read Bibles, they're all twisted. They're man's interpretation. See, it doesn't matter what we interpret or we think a thing should be. What matters is what the Spirit of God says it to be. That's why the Word of God is spiritually discerned. When we see the Lamb of Sacrifice, that's Jesus. We see in the book of Zechariah, one stone shall have seven eyes, as Jesus with seven spirits of God. When we go back into the first five books of the Bible in Genesis, we'll see where they tried to build a tower to heaven. And God, he said, let us go down. See, he was talking to his son. Let us go down and confound our speech. See, we can't get to, to heaven any other way except through Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And the Word of God says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That's the authority of the Lord and the name of the Lord, which means authority. And a strong tower a similitude, a type and shadow, spiritually discern. And when we see these things, sisters, we see that the name of the Lord, the authority of the Lord is a strong tower. What's the authority of the Lord that he put on earth? When our precious Lord Jesus came into this life, He came as a humble lamb of sacrifice. He came as a bride he redeemed by his blood. He veiled himself in flesh so no one could behold his glory. Yet he said, I am come in my Father's name. You receive me not. There's another come in his name. Him you'll receive. Name being authority. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The authority of the Lord God is a strong tower. 
It's spiritually discerned similitude. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father, but by me, strong power. And you can see that when you try to do something through the flesh, it'll fail. Abraham, when he knew Hagar, the Egyptian maid, and they had Ishmael, the Lord told Isaac, or told uh, Abraham, Sarah was going to still have a son. You'll name him Isaac. See, he, Isaac was named to the Lord. He was a child of promise. There we have, unto us a child was born, unto us a son was given. So we see one child was of the flesh, the other child was of the spirit. How did Mary have Jesus? The spirit of God will overshadow thee in the power of the highest. Will come upon thee and a holy thing within thee shall be called the Son of God. We find it in the Old Testament. The Lord gave Sarah the ability to conceive with her womb being dead. See, for with God all things are possible. Nothing's impossible to Him. When we see the deadness of Sarah's womb and the way she was able to bring forth Isaac, even though she knew Abraham at the time, that was a type and shadow of the one to come who would be born of the virgin, Jesus. And we see these things. Oh, sisters, there's so many things that I'd love to teach. Christianity has truly become perverted. Men have split it up and divided it. They've made a mockery of our precious Lord Jesus. They've put in shame openly. Driven people to other faiths. And sadly, there are people in Islam as well who would twist and pervert the Quran. For the sole purpose of getting a second, third, or fourth wife. For the sole purpose of just pushing Islam rather than glorifying God. And that's just as wrong. See, it's the thoughts and intents of the heart, sisters. Do we want to please ourselves or do we want to please God? Can we humble ourselves and be what God made us? Or must we insist on being something? Must we insist on being out in the world? Must we insist on being seen? Feminine men, yes, they look foolish. See, they did the same thing as Adam did when the tempter came, the serpent in the garden. He tempted Eve, the weaker vessel. Know you not that you shall be as gods that are good and evil? There you go. You have it today. People think it because they read the Word of God. Or what they think is the Word of God. They're qualified to teach and preach, and they're not. Because just as the Lord sent His Spirit to guide Moses, He sends His Spirit to guide a true Holy Ghost preacher. To rightly divide the word of truth, bring it forth by the Spirit of God. So there's no divisions, no contradictions, no error. The Holy Ghost preacher doesn't have to remove comments so that only his side is seen. He doesn't have to twist it and try to get converts because we allow the Spirit of God to give eyes to see and ears to hear. See, Jesus said, He said, the way into eternal life is straight and it's narrow and few be there to find it. That's why we don't have to push 
Oh, well, that's what people do about inviting people to church. No. That started with feminism and with the televangelists. Because when the televangelists told people they could watch TV and worship Jesus, those who were neither hot nor cold and straddled that fence, they stayed at home. The other preachers got scared and they started watering down the word of our Lord. The next thing you know, everything was turned around and catered to women. Same thing he did with Eve. No, you're not. You should be as God. And what did Eve do? She protect as a forbidden fruit. What was Adam's sin? Because I hearkened him to the voice of that wife. What have most Christian men done? Satan instilled such a fake love that men will not rule their house anymore. When they should. Yes, they should rule their house. When Vashti, the queen, rebelled against King Azuras, she lost her place. And little Hadassah, who was called Esther, pleased the king because when you look at Esther 2.15, she desired a white man, which, she, which the keeper of the women, the Enoch, would supply. For she knew that the dead Enoch, that chamberlain, the keeper of the women, knew what would please the king. And that's all she wanted was to please him. And he made her queen. Once again, it's a type of shadow of Jesus being a husband, the head of the church. And how rebellious people he won't have. He said the way into eternal life is straight and narrow. There are few that find it. And yet it's written in the Old Testament. Though the children of Israel be as the sands of the sea, yet a remnant shall return. Small portion. It's not many. Why should we invite people to church? The televangelists, mega churches, feminists, they did that. Invite everybody in. Tell them they can live any way they want, that they can accept sin and abomination. And when they did that, they destroyed the church and damned a lot of souls. No. True Christianity has never changed, never will. It's what's called in Jude 3. The common salvation. The original gospel of Jesus Christ. To the elect lady and her children. See Catholicism even. That was formed many years after Christian Christianity started. Peter was never given a fisherman's ring. Peter was given the keys to the kingdom of God. Once again, spiritually discerned. The keys being the wisdom and knowledge to start and you know, guide the church. Well, that's the spiritually discerned wisdom and knowledge. Not carnally. It's not from study. But it's what the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, can reveal. And we see, remember how David, the Spirit of God would be upon him. And he'd run a lion and a bear. Samson, the Spirit of God, came upon him and he slew, what was it, 2,000 with the jawbone of an axe. He ran the lion. But you know, Jeremiah said, he said, Behold, I do a new thing, a woman shall get past a man. We have, Paul said, We have Christ in our heart by faith. The Spirit of God went from moving upon us to being in us. Just as the temple went from being a, a building of stone to 
nothing more than an earthen vessel. We come to delight and acknowledge the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Wisdom and knowledge, our Lord. Praise God. Oh, when we see all these wonderful things, we see Christianity has never changed. Men have changed, women have changed. Books have changed, but not the original gospel. That Old Testament and that King James Bible matches up with that New Testament and the King James Bible. Both bearing witness to the glory of Jesus Christ. Sadly, though, if we pervert it and we put the glory on us instead of our Lord, then we have put in the cab on our Lord. Come to the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. We put in the cab on covered his face. Can't behold the glory. There's nothing wrong with wearing a cap. Christian ladies should veil. They should cover their glory. Whether it's just a veil that covers their head. Whether they wear it hijab style. But you know, if a, if a Christian woman felt so humble she wanted to wear gloves and a the cap, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, she might look like she's Islamic. But if she's a Christian, she wants to be that humble. You know, it's written, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. You know, it's written, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. If we'll allow the Holy Ghost to really renew us, that we can become a new creature in our Lord, truly renewed by the Spirit of God, with a desire to serve Jesus. Remember David? A man after God's own heart. If we can become like David and just have our desire toward God, toward our Lord, he'll lead and guide us to the right ministry. The Lord told Eve, he said, Thy desire should be toward thy husband, and she, he shall rule over thee. Well, David said, written in Psalms, delight thyself in the Lord. He gives you the desires of thine heart. If our desire is towards our Lord Jesus, and we really want to know the truth on how to be saved, he'll give us eyes to see and ears to hear. And we can behold him from the law and the prophets, the Psalms, the Proverbs, the ch history of the children of Israel, all bearing witness to our precious Lord Jesus. If we'll just be humble. If we'll be what God has made us. See, he didn't make a hundred genders or thousands. We were created male and female male to be a type and shadow of the Lord through similitudes, types and shadows, parables. To glorify our Lord, that's why we're created male. That's why we're to rule our house, keep our women in subjection, our families in subjection. To guide them to God through the truth, so that they can make it to God one day have eternal life. The way our Lord, the betrothed, the husband, the head of the church, our betrothed, guides us by his spirit that we might have eternal life. 
all spiritually discerned. And we're created female. To be created female is to be created as a titan shadow of the bride of Christ. Sarah was in the tent. She gave birth to Isaac as the Lord allowed in his time. Remember in Ecclesiastes written, there's a time and a season for all things. In the Lord's time. But we don't want to do it by the flesh. We don't want to use another Bible interpretation, man's education rather than the Holy Ghost. We want to do it God's way. And just as Sarah brought forth that child of promise, we can bring forth Jesus into a world. A world that's of darkness, we can bring forth the light of life. It says he sent his word to heal his people. That healing, spiritual healing, to be renewed by the Spirit of God. Have our sins washed away by the shedding of the blood of the Lamb and the breaking of His precious body. All them sacrifices, all bearing witness to what Jesus would die for. We see that. Sisters, you're created a type and shadow of the bride of Christ. That's why you're supposed to be in subjection to your husband. Because the church, as wrong as it is in most areas, was supposed to be in subjection to our Lord. And led of the Spirit, not man's teaching, and not every Bible. When people interpret what was clearly translated. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, can open eyes and ears, and this is the Lord working, not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And the Lord can do these wonderful things to give them eyes to see and ears to hear. Yes, the word of the Lord can heal his people. And lastly, there was, we're created male and female. Man is a tiny shadow of Jesus. Women as a type and shadow of his bride. We see it with Sarah, Rebecca, Eve, and Hadassah, Ruth, all the bride of a, of a man who is supposed to be a type and shadow of her Lord. Adam was the first Adam. When we see his side pierced and Eve formed, we see Jesus on the cross. A deep sleep fell upon him. Roman centurion stuck a spirit inside out came blood and water as the church is born. Boaz purchased Ruth the wife. Just as Jesus purchased us with his blood. And I don't have time to go into all these wonderful stories as, to show, you know, the, the similitudes and the types and shadows of who Boaz is. You see, sisters, we're created male and female. And women are supposed to dress like ladies, be in the house, veil themselves for their Lord and for their husband and for their father, depending on the case or where they where and how they live. There's nothing wrong with a Christian lady. She should veil, at least cover her head. She wants to wear a hijab, so be it. Who cares? And the other one, we're created male and female, the other one's in the United Jesus said in Matthew 19, if any man make himself any enough for the kingdom of God's sake. That doesn't mean Enoch's who are born in Enoch, they have parts of their body missing. Enoch's who have been made Enoch's of men. That's those who 
can see the Enoch and the Harems. And there are some who made a mistake with their gender and they thought they was something they're not. And they have a body part removed. And then they find out. They come to the Lord and they find out that, you know, no, they were created male to please Jesus. So they live as an Enoch, have a part of their body removed. Then there's those who have made themselves Enoch for the kingdom of God's sake. These are the ones who have said, Now my will be thine, O Lord. Use me as you will. I can be used as male and I can be used as female. Whatever your will is, Lord. Don't care if I gotta preach boldly. female body. Yes, I would wear a dress and I would wear a veil and I would wear gloves too. Because it's modesty. Humility. To be a type and shadow of the bride of Christ. The bride of our Lord. Which we see through so many places throughout the first five books of the Bible. But we just don't have time to go into all of them. But they all bear witness to Jesus, and we can find the same thing in the New Testament. You see, the true Word of God has never changed. The original Word of God has never changed. The original Bible to the church never changed. Not the King James. And as I said, Catholic Church was formed years later. Peter was the apostle to the Jews and Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. He received no fisherman's ring. Right? He was given the wisdom and knowledge for the church to be founded on. But many people want to claim to have the original faith. That's a very sad thing. Because we have to be able to prove that. And there is no problem with the true Holy Ghost preacher preaching from the Old Testament, proving everything lines up to Jesus Christ. And then as you look at it, all the things that glorify Jesus from the Old Testament and the Torah, you find them in the New Testament. Perfectly bearing witness. No flaw. You don't have to lie to get people to believe you. Because straight is the way and narrow that leads to eternal life. And every few that find it, you're not trying to get people to come. You're letting the Spirit of God give them eyes to see and ears to hear so that the sheep will know the shepherd's voice. You don't have to cut off comments so that only ears are seen. Because you can give an answer of the hope that lies within you. But best of all, you love people enough to go humble yourself to do whatever the Lord requires of you. That souls might be saved and that he might be glorified. See, that's making yourself an Enoch for the kingdom of God. Neither male nor female. Don't care. It doesn't matter if you wake up male or you wake up in a female body. It would not matter one bit. Sex means nothing. What matters is Jesus. What matters is Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty. Clearly written in the first five books, Jehovah, not Allah. Pleasing Him means more than anything. And you don't have to use the word God deceitfully to do so and show who Jesus is in the law and the prophet. 
prophets. First five books and all them prophets and the lives of the people, the children of Israel. Oh, praise God. Isn't Jesus wonderful, sister? I hope and pray if anybody sees it, you know. Well, I just hope and pray that you get something out of it, that you'll learn something. And I pray that if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer them the best I can. You got anything you'd like a video on? Feel free to ask. I'd be more than happy to try to help any sister out to give her a more clear understanding. You see, just as I can preach boldly on another platform, and probably when the Spirit of God comes upon me, as an Enoch, preach more boldly than many of them. But that's the Lord who does it, not me. All I can do is yield to His Spirit. And you know, since my spirit's put in a man's body, and I enjoy preaching as a man, I enjoy preaching older, but I enjoy teaching as a man. But you know, I also enjoy, I enjoy teaching sisters if they want to learn. I enjoy being able to teach as a sister to sisters. Dress doesn't bother me one bit. Just as old boots and jeans and denim put them on to preach, sometimes a suit preach as a man. dress. A dress, a veil, looking through a veil, doesn't bother me. You see, if that kind of example our Lord could give to veil himself in flesh and come down here, servant of all, to come as a bride, he would redeem with his blood. Him being the perfect example of an Enoch, but yet he could clear a temple with a whip. Then, you know, I can rejoice in it either way, sisters. I can rejoice preaching as a man, preaching boldly. And I can rejoice preaching in a dress and a veil and gloves and teaching. So our Lord is glorified. So eyes are open and ears are open. So that those precious sisters don't let anybody tell you the word of God has changed. There is an original truth. The original gospel which came forth from the five books of the Bible never changed. And the Lord is never needed to come up with a new way, a new prophet, a new teaching. Because those original Holy Ghost preachers have always carried it on from generation to generation. But sadly, it's the evil one to draw all the attention and pervert it the most. If you got anything on this, please feel free to you know, leave a comment. Please feel free if you, you got any questions, feel free to ask. And I'll be more than happy to try and either answer it or make a video. As I say, if you want a video on something, please ask. And I just hope and I pray that you sisters out there have a blessed day.